It's a pixel thing asks, did you play any point and click adventure games back in the day or just didn't care much about the genre? What are your favorites? Point and click adventure games are my favorite games. I was surprised. Time. I was surprised to hear you say that. I know because it doesn't. I didn't think it would seem like that. Well, but yeah, I don't know why, but I I grew up. Uh, the first video game, one of the first video games I ever played, was at my grandparents' house. My uncle was still living there, and he had Monkey Island Three on the mm, PC. Okay. And I started playing this game, and I fell in love with the the art style and the humor, and like yeah. I was just I got into all the inside jokes that were in that game. I yeah. thought I was like the coolest kid ever. <laughs> and then when I got the fourth game, and the the jokes carried over. When I was at that young age, it was just like I was the coolest thing for me i don't know why and then i realized there was two more games before that because they weren't called three and four they were called like secret of monkey island escape from monkey island yeah. and then i found out there was a one and two i went back and played that and it just started this whole fascination and love for point and clicks Did, so was this on pc or yeah pc okay cool. um and then i got the remakes on xbox 360 and then i went into other games like whispered world is there like a new one recently that came out that's really you should check that out it's really hmm. amazing great artistic style and then deponia which is a lot like monkey island same humor same okay. gameplay every day it's amazing Huh. But the question was for you. So. Well, no, no. I mean, you know, it, it, this is wood. You're on, on, you know, helping me with this one. So, uh, I mean, the obvious answer here is I worked at Sierra. And Sierra, their bread and butter was adventure games. King's Quest, Space Quest, Laser Suit Larry, Gabriel Knight, uh, all of those. Um, and so they, they got, they got famous and rich off mm -hmm. of adventure games. Um, however, when I joined Sierra in the mid 90s, I actually was not a really big fan of adventure games. It's not that I didn't like them, but I always get to a point where I'm stuck. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like like sometimes the puzzles are brutal. I and it's like, that's the, it's the know, worst, it's the worst. It's, yeah, I mean, and so I love the stories, but I, but I would get stuck and this is before the internet or before I could go out there and get the, the hints and stuff it like that. It feels so good when you get it though. Like when you stuck on it for like a week and then you finally get it. Yeah. I hate when it's something really dumb though. Like especially in the <laughs> Monkey Island games, it can yeah. be something as dumb as like using a rubber chicken on a pulley yes. or something. It's like, ah, yeah. uh, yeah. really that had me stuck for a week. But, but the, the thing is though, is that when it comes to my favorites, you kind of hit upon it, is that I love the LucasArts games, mm -hmm. specifically Full Throttle. Have you played that? Uh, no. Oh, dude, Full Throttle is awesome. It's, it's funny. It's a Tim Schafer game. And he uh, makes the best games. Yeah. And it's also not really that punishing. If I remember right, I don't think you can technically die in the game. At least it didn't feel like it was going to punish you for dying. Mm -hmm. But it has an awesome soundtrack. It's all about these bikers and in the future kicking ass against the man. It's such a great game. Um, the other one I really liked too was The Longest Journey. Um, I have got that recently and I look forward to playing it. Yeah, it's really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an epic sci fi adventure, sci fi fantasy adventure. And, uh, has a female protagonist and she's so cool. It's just really well done. I, I really got into that game quite a bit. Speaking of like the LucasArts, Lucasfilm games, mm -hmm. uh, that was Monkey Island that made those. Right. There's actually a really cool Easter egg and I think the third game, I'm pretty sure. Uh, no, actually I think it was one of the earlier ones, but the second game, if you get lost in the forest for long enough, you actually come across, it's all like different screens and they'll start looping. Mm -hmm. If you get lost long enough, you eventually come across a phone booth and you can use it and it will call Lucasfilm, like LucasArts. Oh, um, really? Like in game and you get like, you know when you call like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like lines to get help and the main character starts asking for help and the guy's like take a left and then a right and then another left i love those games it's such a good sense of humor in they them. they had a great sense of humor in those games i think that why they still hold up today like grim fandango was another uh -huh. one which a lot of people they just recently remade that and you can get it on consoles and pcs and it's on vita and all this stuff um and it's for that reason is that they're they're very clever but mm -hmm. they're also really original you know i talk about point clicks all day but in in monkey island i talk about that all day as well mm -hmm. but there's actually if you go into a bar that's actually this dead guy with a skeleton he's got a huge button that says ask me about grim fandango oh really like, there's so many grim fandango like yeah. jabs and jokes in that game yeah and if you click on it and you say like talk about about it would just be like nah i don't want to do that you know uh, another thing about adventure games uh recently that i've enjoyed is playing them on an ipad and the real yeah. be because uh, a touch a touch device like an iPad really emulates a mouse really well. Mm -hmm. And so for instance, uh, I played and finished uh, Broken Sword, which was ported over to the iPad, but it was completely redesigned for the interface. And it was really cool. Like it had the ability to hold down your finger and then it would highlight all the things you could interface with. So you didn't have to kind of hunt and peck and try to figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. It was really nice. And it had hints built in and it had multiple stages of hints. So for instance, it had the one where it's just very vague, you know, and then to the point where it's basically telling you, okay, here's what you do, mm -hmm. which again, I appreciate because that way you don't stop playing the game. I appreciate it, but I'm too stubborn to actually use them. <laughs> I just can't do 
it at all. No, and that's what's nice about it is that you can use it as much or as little as, yeah. as you want. So, so all right, dude, great question. Thank you. Point and clicks, love them. This video is made possible in part by the awesome contributors on Patreon.com. Viewers like you can help support my videos and get access to cool perks like early access to my videos, ask me questions for these Tuesday videos, and much more. So check out patreon.com slash metaljesusrocks if you want to help me bring you awesome content every single week. Thanks for watching.